Hi there, this is Mo Volans for Tuts Plus, and I'm doing two tutorials this month in video form, and I thought I'd cover the subject of mastering. It's always popular. So let's take a look at two processes that are probably considered special treatments. We'll cover MS processing in this video, and then in another, I'll look at multiband processing. I know multiband processing is something that people have been asking about. And in both of these, I'm going to show you how I use them in a mastering chain. Obviously, this is just one way. There's going to be loads of you out there that, uh, you know, use them in different ways. And maybe I'm not using them in technically the correct way, but they are. This is the way that I would employ them in a mastering chain. So hopefully you can pick something up from both of these techniques. Now, mid-side processing is a pretty technical subject, and I'm not going to go through it all right now. I suggest if you really want to know about it, you do some uh, a bit of research on it. But I'm going to show you how we use it in a mastering chain. It can be used to create uh, mic setups and creative mic setups and uh, record mono sources in stereo, etc., and phase cancellation and all sorts of things. But in the mastering chain, we can use it to independently control the mono and stereo information in a signal. And as you can imagine, that can be really useful. So there are a few manufacturers of plugins that create uh, devices that do this, uh, software software plugins at least, and uh, Brainworks have to be at the forefront. Like companies like FabFilter and Flux, um, they all do them, but Brainworks were probably the original and are definitely my favorite. This is their flagship MS processor, and it's, it's an EQ, um, and it does, it's an enhancer, it's a de it does several things, which we're obviously going to get into. Um, but this is available through the Plugin Alliance umbrella of uh, companies now, and you can get that from the Plugin, Plugin Alliance website. They do a trial, I think you need Nylock, but um, uh, in fact, may, maybe you don't anymore, but definitely worth checking out the trial. Um, and it may look pretty intimidating to somebody that's, you know, just getting into mastering. And to just show you my setup here, I've got a, a precision... Um, com bus compressor from UAD. This could be any bus compressor. It's just to um, even out the uh, the transients. And then after the BX digital, I've got a limiter, brick wall limiter, which is inducing about five or six dB of gain reduction and uh, obviously um, applying some perceived volume there. So it's a very very simple chain. Um, we've got sort of a trance track here that's a pre master. can see we've got a couple of dB of compression there on the, the bus compressor and I've filtered out the low end in, in other words I'm not treating the low end and I've got about 60 or 70 percent wet mix on that and you can see the limiter is doing around four or five dB pretty sort of standard dance amount of limiting there so pretty epic sort of trance track you know sort of uh, euro type thing um, and I feel like this this came from a mix that was we weren't able to alter the mix. The client couldn't couldn't change the mix. So um, it needs it needs brightening up a little. The low end needs controlling slightly and uh, we could maybe make it a little wider. OK, so how can we do that with mid side processing? Well, on the left here, you can see this is the mono section. OK, make sure that you're in MS mastering mode. Um, and this will ensure that you're treating mono and stereo with the mid-side uh, matrix there. So, like I say, mono on the left, stereo on the right, okay? Now, when we look at the mono information, we're thinking about, you know, the kick drum, probably the sub bass, um, you know, the, the more s static, simple sounds in the mix. And we really want to keep that low end focused and mono. So before we start treating the, the mono information, how can we ensure that everything is mono down there? Well, there's something called the mono maker, and this is really uh, right down to Brainworks. This is one of their proprietary techs, and you will see this in other plugins, but it probably won't be as simple and you know well implemented as this. You literally just go up and choose the frequency, and anything below that frequency is going to be made completely mono. Now I, I tend to like, especially in dance mixes like this, I prefer, you know, about 270 around there. Um, and that ensures that, you know, maybe 200 to 270, somewhere around there. Um, 
anything below that frequency is going to remain completely mono. So it sort of focuses your bottom end. And I think that, you know, this is really important. It's going to work in any bass heavy beat orientated music, any electronic music, um, you know, straight away, just get that low end mono. And I think it just gives you a really focused sound. So once you've done that, you can start to apply um, some treatment. Now let me just loop a section. The loop here won't probably won't be exact, by the way. So if you hear it loop and it's off, don't worry. Um, it's just so that we've got something to treat. Okay, so straight away, I'm going to go for this bass shift. And it's this is like a, a sort of a low-end psychoacoustic um, enhancer for the low end. And it, it, it adds everything sort of below about 100 hertz. And then it... it brings a small dip in in the low mids which sort of works really nicely in conjunction with the the enhancement on the low end and you don't need very much of this you know one or two db is about as much as you want to add sometimes a small filter on the low end you know 20 hertz or just below um, can work nicely just to ensure that there's no you know ridiculously low subsonics in there um, and Okay, that's sounding good. And then we can start to add some higher EQ. And the cool thing about the Brainworks is you can see when I add that, it gives you sort of an exaggerated curve and solos out that frequency. So you can hear, let's sweep it. So if you want to add some high mids there to the mono. Great. Okay. So some really sort of simple treatments to the mono. Now to the stereo information. And you can solo this, by the way. So you can hear it sort of reverbs, pads. We can just filter off the low end, really. Because the mono maker's already doing that, making sure that the everything below a certain area is mono. But to it, enhance that even more, the stereo information can be filtered. We don't really need any low end on that stereo information. You can hear that by adding that, I'm not taking anything away from the mix, I'm just ensuring that everything down there is filtered away because we don't need low end flailing about in a stereo fashion you just don't want it now we can add some high end a bit of sheen i'm going to do a shelving filter and there's a present shift here so we can use a little bit of that as well um, you can see i'm using very small amounts and this is because we're in a mastering situation and to enhance the stereo information even more, you can probably use this little stereo width control here and go to say 120. And really all that does is turn this stereo info up, as far as I can tell. <laughs> that seems to be what it does. Now the differences are subtle here, but once you get into the core of the mix, let's open this cycle up a bit. and everything's limited. You feel it open up a little more and you feel that low end treatment. I mean, you can, you can really hear it if you turn it up. But this is a great way of adding enhancement to the, low, to the mono information and, and adding low end and while staying focused. Because I often find if you just add a, even a really great mastering EQ, like a massive passive or something like this, if you add low end, you treat everything. So if there is too much stereo information down there at the bottom, you can end up adding low end to all of that information. So hopefully this gives you a little insight into how to use this mid-side processor at least, and it'll probably help you apply uh, these treatments to other mid-side processors. Um, and also ensure while you're doing it that, you know, all your levels stay within, uh, you know, below clipping. There's our loop coming in. <laughs> but you can hear we've added a nice sheen. We've got a great stereo image. 
and we've got a nice warm bottom end. And all of that without messing up our stereo information and keeping our mono information focused. So there you go. In the next video, I'm going to take a look at multiband processing and how you can slide one of those into your mastering uh, chain and uh, hopefully improve things even more. <laughs>